Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. We're gonna have some high sec PvE fun in the Confessor. This is a Confessor fit I've been messing around with recently and it's sort of like a hybrid fit, you could say. I like, I've been kind of having a bit of a keen thing for these fits that can do a lot of different things. Uh, so this is then a fit of a Confessor that can do T2 Electric Abyss solo, but it can also do all the stuff that you can do in like these combat anomalies in high sec. So if we go here and enter the fit right here, it's a very tight fit. Got like only zero CPU left, 0 0.8 power grid left. I've not got any like particular implants in the gift fitting. So this is really cuts it close. But this is the fit right here. It's a beam confessor and it does the abyss really well but it also has good capabilities of taking out these anomalies in high sec you know like the dens refuges etc and we're also equipped with this core probe launcher to you know focus on being able to scan down potential ded sites i've actually already had a experience where i found a three out of ten ded site uh, but someone else was there before me and they were in fact he was a fan of my channel and he said like 07 in chat and then I warped this DD site and I see he's already there. So I was thinking of taking just blitzing the site and trying to t steal the loot. But then I thought uh, since he's like uh, already fan of the channel and he would start getting that. I was just like yeah here take the loot. And you know what it actually dropped some really good stuff too. So it was good for him. He got like a Dread Garista's multi-spectrum shield hardener. So it was really good. Only from a 3 out of 10 too. So either way, let's go. The the one thing that is that I'm using here is that I'm using beam lasers. I'm not using the uh, the pulse lasers. The pulse lasers they're good, but the beam lasers are really good when it comes to these high sec activities, especially because you got the good range. Even in the abyss, it's quite useful to have the beams because you get the good range. You can start doing damage straight away. If we go here and use the aurora, look at that, 59 fall off, 55 optimal, just directly able to do damage. So even though it does less DPS than the beams, I still think it's worth to go with the. Uh, uh, or even though it does, does less DPS than the pulses, I still think it's worth to go with the beams since you get that extra DPS. It's often you're, or rarely you're going to be in range of conflagration anyway to utilize that DPS. Before we go on our journey right here, I'm going to go with a little bit of a clean my paint a little bit on my ship. There we go. Like a shiny clean. I think the ship looks really cool in the cold iron skin. And I've made a little route here so that we go to this system of Otuni as the, like, the final destination. And we're going to basically be looking good running refuges, dens, and then maybe even hideaways. Scan for potential DD sites until we get to the goal. When we come to the goal here, there's a free Colombe here. And there is uh, then where we're going to be running some abyss sites. So that's why I've got some of these agitated electrical filaments with me. Very cheap filaments. So let's get into this. This video is going to be focusing on the high sec expiration aspect. And then next time we'll be focusing on the abyssal side of this. Let's undock and get into this. So yeah, drone assembly. Nah, nothing interesting there. And we're in propulsion mode that makes us go very fast. Right, very good to have that. And I've got it divided into two groups you see here. Because when we're in these anomalies, often we one-shot the NPCs. So that's why it's really useful to just to have these two groups here. So you can like one-shot multiple of them at a time. One thing that's also nice of the Confessor, and generally speaking with the Tick 3 destroyers, is that they have very good scan resolution. So if we go here, Jackdaw for example. Also it's pretty high scan resolution, not as good as the, uh, the uh, Confessor. I think it could have something to do with my skills. Nah, uh, my skills and all these sensor compensations are the same. So this has a pretty good scan resolution or ability to lock up stuff quickly. So that's why I think that it's very good for these anomalies because often you kill these NPCs and these high sec anomalies so fast that one thing that actually limits you a lot of the time to do them fast is actually your lock speed. So that's why even though cruisers and even bigger stuff is able to do these uh, sites like very easily with a lot of DPS, uh, often it'll take so long to lock them up though the NPCs that you wouldn't actually even have like it'll be faster just to go with something small like a destroyer or tech 3 destroyer or even a frigate so what i'll do here is i'll just approach this gate here we'll just start scanning here the fit is not particularly expensive i mean we've got a bit of bling on it but it's not extremely expensive I've got this A-type small armor repair that actually doesn't cost a whole lot more than the C-type. In fact, I think it costs the same amount as the C-type. The thing with the A-type is that it's got worse fitting requirements than the C-type. Ooh, a combat site. We could have maybe found something already. 
Let's see now. Hope it's a three out of ten. Let's see now. Warranted guy there. Oh, Pith Robux asteroid base. Is this a type of? I think this is a like a low level DED site, like two out of ten. Let's try going for it. I wonder if we can actually go through it because of the site requirements. It's a one out of ten, and max size is frigate. So unfortunately, we can't use this. But you know, you can sometimes find cool stuff from time to time. Let's go for this Gerstis hideaway. So I'm using a Tech 2 probe launcher. I wanted to go for a Sisters Core probe launcher, but then I thought, ah, it's a 20 extra million. I don't really think it's that much worth it, but it could be an option to go with a Tech 2 one or a Sisters Core probe launcher too. I've got, instead just a standard uh, Tech 2 variant. And so you can see here, we've got mono propellant here. I wanted to go for Tech 2 afterburner or bling afterburner, but we don't have the fitting requirements for it. And then I use this Crucible small cap battery, a very special cap battery because it has a very good um, fitting requirements when it comes to the CPU in particular because usually uh, the cab batteries even the small ones have some sort of CPU requirement but the Crucible has even lower than the Compact or Republic Fleet variants so it is very good so you can see here with the Aurora we have really good range and when sharpshooter we can even just go for the standard right here because we're even in range 35 kilometer fall off so this is good you see here we often one shot these guys we just go and just snipe these guys like this is really fun and like we're faster than this Vexel Navy probably a lot to do with the fact that we've got better scan resolution so we're able to lock this stuff up before he can even go for it and we basically alpha these guys too so you see that very smooth right there very smooth and no he didn't get anything here unfortunately but that's just the way it is sometimes and the damage control is quite important I wanted to go for a tech damage control but again I had problems with the CPU really all CPU limited and I could obviously go for or I could very likely put a tech 2 if I were to either blink some modules with the heat sinks or put a CPU implant in the tech 2 damage control or the, the damage control in general gives a very good buff and that's quite needed because Charybdis Tyrannus wrecking shots with our damage control right here will actually almost one shot a full armor that we've got not exactly one shot but almost full one shot Charybdis Tyrannus wrecking shots in T2, they do 3,000 Omni damage. We have, in total, of our armor in sharpshooter mode, 3.1k EHP when you factor in all the resistances like to Omni damage. With the defense mode, we'll have way more. We'll have 4k, so it'll be all right there. But if we're in sharpshooter mode, it'll allow us to do the site quicker. So that's why I think it's quite essential to have a big buffer. And that's why we've got a thermal armor reinforcer as well, as well as a multi-spectrum of the Imperial Navy variant here to boost our uh, buffer capabilities indirectly by increasing our resistance. It's a bit annoying that the Confessor doesn't have a big buffer in its armor. I would have hoped they would actually had more buffer, like maybe 1.1 or 1.2k HP because the Jackdaw has a 1.1k HP in its uh, uh, shield. Like you can see here, if we go in the Jackdaw, it has 1.125k HP. It's got pretty decent HP right there. It would be nice to have that as well in our armor, but I guess the resistances we have got sort of make up for it. We've got pretty decent resistances in our armor. Okay, two of these cosmic signatures here i'll scan them down one thing that's very nice about the tech 3 destroyers is that they have a reduced cpu requirements for core probe launchers so we will be able to fit them very easily so if you look here we we'll go here we turn this off look how much cpu it uses one or <laughs> well, basically nothing is yeah just one and we've got this auto targeting system here. It's quite good because you can lock up more stuff when in the abyss. It's not essential though. I mean, we could obviously take it off if we wanted to, but it feels good to have filled every single slot right here and just got the fitting the fit just right. Okay, let's see. I got anything here? Wormhole. And we go here. All this scan out stuff pretty quickly, to be honest. Even though it's not a, like a crazy amount of sensor strength we've got here. With a good optimized scanning ship, you usually will go with like 100 plus, but this is not like a dedicated scanning ship. It's more like an extra feature of this ship. Okay, we'll reduce the probe size or scan size. See so, you now, cosmic signature. Anything interesting here? 
Hmm, it's very small. Could be something interesting, actually. Well, I wonder if there's a ghost site. That's a possibility there. Ghosty ghost site. Something I was even thinking that if you wanted to do, like, every single kind of activity in high sec, you can put an integrated analyzer, a ligature integrated analyzer. So it fits actually quite nicely here. But it's nice to have that tracking computer to get the good range. If you don't have it, we have, like... If we go with sharpshooter, we have 53 kilometer fall off. So it's not like a really big difference, but it is nice to have that good range. The beam lasers, especially since they naturally have very good uh, range anyway. The integrated analyzer can do uh, both data and relic sites. So it's like multiple things it can do. Oh, this is probably a ghost site to be honest. Like, look how, look how hard it is to scan this thing down. Or it could be maybe a special type of wormhole. Sometimes wormholes have got very like small scan size. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this is a data site or of the ghost site variant. We'll just see here. What is this? What is this? Hmm, it's moving. I see maybe here. Hmm, I wonder what this is. But if we see data site, we're just going to go away from here. Could sometimes be that we're scanning, yeah, data site. Level 4. Okay, it could either there be that or a very good data site. Like a normal data site, but like a very good variant. Because sometimes you can have these special data sites that are like not ghost sites, but just still have a lot more of these like high tier kind of uh, caches. Okay, so we can't do that. It's uh, probably a ghost site. But either way, someone else will here will have some good isk from that ghost site right there. Let's go to the next system. Let's go with a Gleam right here. Try to wreck these guys quicker than the other people right here. Gleam is very good for small stuff that's very close because it's got increased tracking if you compare it to multi-frequency. The, dif the difference in DPS is not that significant. But the the main thing is they've got the good tracking. So it's very good here. It's got a lot worse range. That's, that's also something you have to consider when using it. There's a lot of competition right here. Oh, there's someone here who's red. Yeah, there's someone who likes to gank people. Someone you have to always be keep an eye on local in uh, when you're doing these kind of sites, just in case someone decides to gank. Oh, we're using we're not using the sharpshooter. That was silly of me, but we didn't get anything anyway. Three cosmic signatures. Okay, that's pretty decent right there. And my route takes me back to the system I was in before. Thing is, in this system I saw earlier today, a lot of cosmic signatures. And there's three still here. I think it's because it's not a particularly popular system. There are some people here though. But I mean, something that is though, that this tracking computer I've got here, since it's a compact one especially, it's not providing such a big bonus to our uh, like optimal range of using this. So you could put a ligature analyzer there. One thing that is however very good is that you can put a tracking speed script as well. It gives a very good ability to track good to the stuff that's up or really close in the abyss. We'll see that later. See like anything interesting here? A lot of stations in the system. It's like funny how in certain systems in Eve you just find a lot of stations, and sometimes it's just like, please give me one station. I just want to find one station, and then you got systems like this with like fifty thousand stations. Some landmarks as well. In aura of explorer Marcus Yeon. Yeon is a typical Caldari name. I remember one of my characters a very, very long time ago had that because it's like an auto-generated name, I think. Yeon is like a auto-generated Kaldari surname. What is in here? What is in here? Please be combat site. Not a wormhole. Just wormholes is all I find nowadays. A very common thing to find. Yeah, Wormhole again. Just wormholes. Nothing but wormholes. Wait, wormhole and unstable wormhole. Is there a difference? I wonder if there's a difference. Ah, never mind. Will we find anything interesting? It's just really just the way it is when I do exploration in EVE Online, hardly finding anything. But I really like the way this Confessor performs when you're doing the high sec anomalies at least. It's very fast, very, very, very fast. Because just 
blitzes through them. It just really doesn't care. You just blitz straight through them. You just fall on hide away. And it has a lot to do with like, generally speaking, we have pretty high DPS, but also we have very good range. It's imp extremely important. The Jackdaw has good range too, but unlike the Jackdaw, we have instant damage. So it'll take a bit of time for his missiles to hit. Even if you have auto-targeting missiles, you still hit instantly here. I just pop it like that. Just lock up, pop, lock up, pop. That's all it is. So I really like it, uh, the way this works with the... Uh, Instant damage. Let's see. If these in standard range or aura range, I think was what we got here. Go and lock these guys up, and even pre-fire one of these, and just start shooting. Really simple as that. We can even start moving towards them just to get in range of closer range ammo as well. There we go. Let's shoot this guy too, and there we go. Poppity pop, poppity pop. I got some cruisers as well. We're not even doing optimal damage type since we are doing uh, the EM and thermal damage. These guys are mostly going to be, or oh, it's going to be almost optimal to do kinetic damage. But we are still doing it very fast, even though we're not doing optimal damage types. So that's a really good thing. It also just shows how good this ship is at doing these kind of high sec anomalies. I don't even know if you can get anything good from this anomaly. I'm just doing it anyway, just because you can. I think you can always get a possibility of getting a dread Garistas when you finish these kinds of sites. Like many times when I do these, I hardly take any damage that I even don't even need to use my armor repair because we already knock out everything at like close range. They really does not matter. Let's go for these guys here. You can just start shooting like that. We'll focus fire on these cruisers. They have a little bit of active reps, so they'll be more efficient, I think, to use both of them. Just take out these destroyers because they go down almost instantly. They're most of their shields here. The Garistas guys is in the well, most of the HP is in the shield right here. Let's start shooting this guy. There we go. We can even go for multi frequency here. Look at yeah, multi frequency has a really good range with the confessor. Uh, look at that. 19 fall off. Optimal of 15. Really good. Oh, there's a lot of cruisers here. Make our way towards them. It's now always the closest one. This one right here. A scriber. Some silences over here too. The Garistas are known for having a lot of ECM, so I hope they don't use a lot of that on me. ECM scrubs. And if we were doing like a, a higher level DED site or we had problems with the tank, we could always like replace this or this with like a particular hardener for the certain rat type we're fighting. Then we could potentially have a lot more tank as well. Like say I was having troubles tanking the Garistas. I could obviously just take this out and then put in a, like a kinetic armor hardener like maybe this or it's this one right here oh look at them we suddenly have 76 percent kinetic resist very powerful resistances we've got pop and nothing interesting just like usual how my experience is with these types of anomalies the reason why I switched to propulsion mode when I'm moving is not that we have faster warp speed, but it gives us better inertia and it makes us align faster. So we align a tiny bit faster, so it doesn't make us go a whole lot faster, but it's still nice to have the propulsion mode. And I also think the propulsion mode is the mode where the confessor looks the best. I think it looks the coolest when you're in propulsion mode. I don't know, I just like the way it got like a more compact look here. Oh, no, Garista's Hideaway, actually. We should definitely do that because it has actually a chance of getting some good stuff, the Garista's Hideaway. And they're really fast as well. They take like one or two minutes to do. Put Imperial Navy Standard. I think they're all just... I think Aurora, actually. They're still a bit at a bit of a range in these Hideaways, I believe. Last time, at least. Maybe they have some variants there. I've got them close to each other. Let's see now. What have we got here? Okay, as you see, it's just like one NPC. Okay, no, we can actually use standard. We could even use multi-frequency, to be honest. Let's go for multi-frequency. It's in the range of multi-frequency. Not a common thing to see. And uh, we just pop. And lock them up. We didn't want to lock up our rake, though. Pop, pop. And... Oh, Grist Scout Outpost. Yes, we've got a DED site just like that. Okay, it was a good idea to go for that. <laughs> Escalations. Oh, no, no sec, why? Why no sec? Oh, it's, it's one jump out. That's nice. But oh, 
what no sec let's see now wait for you to do a shorter route there you go there hmm, it looks like a pretty remote low sec system so maybe we will actually run it you know what let's try running it we'll just go and uh, uh switch clones when we get to this system right here of otuni and then we can run it then later okay let's continue our route here because i don't want to go in there if i've got some implants in it doesn't look to be that much of a nasty low sex system because it's sort of like indirectly got an island as well so i think it'll be all right i'll check a z kill like literally everywhere it could have been it just had to be one of these low sex systems oh Aguila got popped here he got popped by some hunters some gnosis was it on a stargate no, it was at a station, in fact. Hmm. Well, there you go. Okay, we're back here. Let's go for these hideaways. Maybe they could have something as well, like before, remember? Get a hideaway from there. Multiple hideaways here. Hmm. Okay, but this doesn't look too bad. And some random Punisher got killed. He was probably ratting. No. Yeah, look, I thought that he was probably ratting. Because I used to rat before in a Punisher when I started out EVE Online as well. Let's see now, what else is... And this was even a long time ago, so it seems to be pretty quiet in this low sex system over here. Uh, not a tour lot of activity been going on recently. And we'll pop this guy here. Sharpshooter. Pop! You see that, like, the lock time is what really bottlenecks us. It's not really the damage at all. So, just getting damage on the field as quick as possible makes you do this as quick, uh, a lot quicker. Let's see, now. pop. Pop. Oh, we did it. You shouldn't have used both of them. I think it's not a good thing that this guy is here because the I think that when a escalation occurs, it's given to a random person who's nearby. So I think that it makes it less likely actually that we'll get a, a DD site if someone else is here, which is quite annoying. Hideaway, hideaway. Whoop to his hideaway. Hmm. Burrow. I don't think Burrow is a good. Well, there's two hideaways here. It's really good. But I think that is actually quite a rare thing to get a DD sites from the uh, the hideaways. I think it's more common for refuges because I don't hear it as common occurring as with the refuges. But maybe I'm wrong. Okay, nothing going on here. That guy just finished this one right here. And a Damovic, in fact, quite unpopular. I've seen, not seen a whole lot of Triglavian ships doing this kind of stuff. And the true Lavian ships would be nice, but the thing is that they're really crap and that they don't have the good damage. Like, it takes a lot of time to spool up. But maybe it could be good. You've got good tracking, good for the small stuff. Okay, let's see now here. I've got this one NPC. We find if we just pop this and then we actually get it. Let's see now. Well, we get this here. Pop. <gasps> Dread Garistas! Dread Garistas! Dread Garistas, come on! We got it! I hope he doesn't steal it. I hope he doesn't steal it. That was a Dread Garistas right there. Kind of cool. I wonder if this guy is going to take it, though. Let's see now. Will Algos take it? Oh, look at that. Algos deciding to be cheeky. He's going to take out Dread Garistas. No! But then again, we did steal after all of this from him, sort of. You can lock him up just to make him a little bit scared. Let's see now. Anything in here? Nah, really crap. Really crap. Okay, nothing more here. We'll just continue to the next system. We can even make a, like, add this to destination again. Well, no, we can't even add waypoint. No, we can't add waypoint here. We'll just maybe have to add the system to waypoint because I was thinking that after the I've landed here in the system, We'll do the DED site, and then next after that, we'll do some abyssal sites because I think it'll be fun to do the DED site in Losek, even though it'll be a bit spicy, I think. But the T3 destroys, they're really good because they got the good align time. So they shouldn't be too bad when it comes to avoiding cheeky scrubs in Losek. Oh, oh, what is this? The system is completely full. Let's, uh, we've got a lot of, with two hideaways, and we've got some. Cosmic signatures, a ton of cosmic signatures, in fact. 
I've heard something. This is just what I've heard. I'm not 100% sure, but I've heard that it's more likely that you get DD size if you're in 0 0.7 systems. I don't know why, but I think that's the case. Not 100% sure. Okay, we'll actually go close just in case it happens that there's a Dread Gristers again. Then at least we'll be able to take it straight away so that we won't have the issue where we had before that if someone's potentially going to steal it. Let's start lock these guys up. And it could actually really be worth training those targeting skills to increase lock time when it comes to these kind of things. Combat side, ooh. Level one. Let's see now. Because I think that a 3 out of 10 can be level 1. Because I have got a 3 out of 10 before. And it was level 1. Let's see. Hide way over there. Walk towards this. I wonder what this combat site is. Combaty combat. Where's this combat site? We've got someone who's red here. A GT ganker. Ooh. That is uh, an abyssal ganker actually. Or associated with abyssal gankers. Rogue drone infestation. Is this a good thing let's see dd two out of ten destroyer Ooh, can we try this let's just pop this uh site first aurora we'll just pop this uh, hideaway and then we'll go for this uh, rogue drone infestation over here we'll go and scout out more of these um cosmic signatures see if there's anything here we're using aurora right here so now we'll make our way towards the center here we anyway one shot. We could use standard to be honest, but we're anyway one shotting these guys. Okay, we'll go to this rogue drone infestation. Nothing seemed to drop particularly. D E D, two out of ten. It said max size destroyer. I wonder if they mean standard destroyers or maybe tech three destroyers. Because I know that often sites are a little bit more strict towards like tech three or tech two destroyers, since they are you know more powerful than the tech ones by quite a big margin but i have a feeling that all those other guys are gonna go for this is there anything close no no one's here wonderful we'll be able to use this oh we're able to do this nice let's do this dd site right here this is quite fun i'm finding a lot of things a very unlike my usual experience in doing high sec exploration i think it's just to do with that i'm doing a lot more scanning usually i don't do a whole lot of scanning i just do the sites let's see now we've got a bunch of these drones here and there's also an acceleration gate we'll move towards this acceleration gate and we'll also put some more closer range ammo on. Yeah, this is nice. A really good anti frigate platform, this uh, uh, Confessor is, because just like really one tap stuff, you have decent tracking as well. It's overall a really good experience. Let's see, what is this one over here? Hmm. Oh, I wonder what we get here. Wormhole. So many wormholes, it's quite annoying. Rogue drone infestation. They're going pretty fast. Oh, we can't even shoot here. They're too far away. Aurora. Let's see now. Aurora. Can I go for standard, actually? Standard. Standard. Oh, do you see that? how many? We're just popping them like that. Let's just use Aurora, to be honest. These guys are really far away as well. This is quite interesting, actually. You're finding all this kind of cool stuff here. I'm really not used to this. It's a whole different experience when you're going with the scanning aspect of this. And also, at the end of the day, if we get bored of doing exploration, we can do some, uh, you know, some abyss sites in this. It's not like just a one thing we can do in this ship right here. So it's pretty cool. I like this. I like this a lot. Poppity pop. And we're taking basically no damage, just sniping these guys before they even come close. I'm going to propulsion mode just to boost our speed a little bit. How far is acceleration get away? 13, 12 kilometers. Yeah, this confess, I like it a lot. It's going on a big adventure. A big adventure. We've been doing this for a while now, actually. Let's see, now. central pocket. Okay, so we're coming to the end now. We can probably go with standard, to be honest, because most stuff really is not in even outside standard range. If we go with the sharpshooter, we have 35 fall off. See now, ooh, assembled container. See what is in here. Oh, they're really far away again. Ooh. And pop these guys who are going at really far distances. Pop, pop. 
And pop, pop. Oh, this guy's too even too far away for our Aurora. Wrecker album. The boss room, the quote unquote boss room, is getting absolutely annihilated by us. <laughs> really cool how we're so powerful in this confessor compared to these guys, like overpowering these NPCs by massive margins. Let's see now. What is this? Ellen Fester Alvi, what do you think you are going to do? Pop, pop. And lock everything up here. Pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Go for this container. I think this is where the loot is. Unless there's going to be like a sentient. Because a sentient is like the type of faction variant of uh, the rogue drones. So they might be what will have some loot as well. I'm not sure if we can get sentients here. Okay. <laughs> we didn't take any damage basically from our shields. Oh, what is this here? Rogue drone container. There's another one over here too. Hmm. And then there's this hive under construction thing as well. Okay, so we've got containers here. 50 overseer effects. Oh, this doesn't look that good. 50 overseer effects. And then minerals may contain a faction module. Okay. Shadow Serpent is adaptive nano plating. Uh -huh. Doesn't look that great. Let's see what we get here. 50 overseer effects. That's really crap. <laughs> okay, let's see now. What is this container down here got? To be honest, we can just... Can we save this? No, we can't save this. We're going to have to move around here. Do a little bit of maneuvering. Can we go through this? Maybe we can go through this. Just shoot this to destroy it in case it blocks our way towards the container. Hive under construction. No, we can go through it. That's cool. Because sometimes the hitbox is a little bit weird of the objects in EVE, so you can't pass through it, even though it looks like you should be able to. What? Oh, sell what I think from some special skin I sold. All right, it's really, it's a good thing if you want to like uh, make some long-term investments or buy like uh, skins and then you'll see them gradually go up in price as time goes on. Zydrain. Oh, that's crap right there. Lame. Okay, so now I know. Do not run Rogue Drone 2 out of 10s. Seems useless. Or it maybe could have dropped a faction module item. Does not seem to be that good. Garista's Burrows, I don't think you can get anything from them. So we're going to ignore them. A cosmic signature. Oof, that was a lot of gnosis. It's like a fleet or something. I don't know what that is. Combat site. Ooh. Can it be something good? Please be something good. Please be something good. Hope it's not like a Garista's yard or something like that. Really crap. We could do it anyway. Just, just test this confessor. Pith Merchant Depot. Okay. Oh, it's a DED rated complex as well. Ooh. May contain Pithy Frigate B type modules or Worm BPC. Ooh. Let's do this. Let's do this. We can even go in probably because I can't do the one out of tens. I think two out of tens and up we can do. I don't think we have, don't think we have enough tank for the five out of tens. I definitely don't think that's the case. We'd have to use some heavy artillery to get through the five out of tens. But four out of tens, I don't think we'll have any issue. We'll be able to speed tank a lot of the damage as well. And I think this will do them a lot better than like the four out of tens, a lot better than the Hecate because the Hecate has really bad range. You have to get close to everything. But here we'll just blap everything like we were doing before. Like, if it was the Heke I was using in that previous site, I'd have to spend forever to get close. But here, we are just doing damage straight away. Even if it's a bit lower than the close range variant of guns, we're still doing damage. And that is the most important thing. If you're doing damage, it doesn't matter if you're not doing damage and got a lot of DPS, if you're not doing anything at all. Really, the Confessor seems to be a good example of when range comes into play when you're doing these DED sites. And even the Abysses, when we'll see later using this fear for the Abyss. Please have no one here. Yes, no one's here. Okay, good. Two out of ten DED site. Will we get rich? Will we get rich? Let's see if we'll get rich. Give me the tankisk, please. Give me the tankisk. Okay, time for sharpshooter mode. I guess, you know, we've got the acceleration gate over there. We'll just go and activate it straight away because these guys are going to fall down really quickly. Go remove all these. Remove large collidable objects because i got tabs specifically for LCOs, large collidable objects. Is there no one going to spawn? 
I guess we can just use uh, propulsion mode just to go quicker. Who would have thought? We've encountered so many things on our little journey right here. Found a rogue drone DD site. Some got a 4 out of 10. Got a Dread Garistas. I have many times gone through high sec for hours without finding anything. But again, we are scanning this time. We're not just doing the anomalies. So that's really good because can get, it seems like we can get a lot more by just doing these uh, scanning for the special signatures. Okay. This gate is locked. The Sage Pass must be retrieved and sold in your cargo hold. This is who? Gatekeeper? What? Oh. I've been waiting here for now a long time. It doesn't seem like anything is spawning here. Strange. I don't know. Maybe what's happened is that someone's killed the NPCs here. Because apparently what's supposed to happen is that we have like some NPCs that are here and then we kill them. And then they drop a key that allows you to go here. But it doesn't seem like there are any here. So it could maybe be that some people have killed them or something. I don't know. It's very strange. If you guys know why this occurs, then let me know in the comments below. There's a lot of gnosis as I just went past her. <laughs> and now we come to our destination of Otuni. I wonder if there's going to be anything interesting in Otuni. Ooh, a Gersa's Refuge and a Cosmic Signature. Let's do this before we go to this right tower over here. That allows us to switch out our implants. And a wormhole. Unfortunate, unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. Got a little bit of buzzkill right there, but that maybe explains why those sites are still there and no one taking them. Maybe it was bugged or something, so no one took that site. And then also the 2 out of 10 rogue drone, maybe that's why it was still there because it just gives no isk. Unfortunate, unfortunate. I was a bit hyped, you know, found two TD sites, but it explains why they existed there. Alright, so now we've come to the clone bay. That was it. It was a long journey. Hopefully, we'll be more lucky when we get to this 4 out of 10 next time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.